Despite starting its life on PC, there's no doubt that the horde game Vampire Survivors feels very much at home on mobile. Being itself inspired by another mobile game, its simplistic design fits right at home here. The controls feel immaculate, and your input remains very expressive for a game that only lets you control your character's movement and nothing else. The rest becomes about careful positioning and clever choice of upgrades. And since the upgrades you pick from are random, it means that every round is just a little bit different. You also collect coins, which can be spent on more permanent upgrades between rounds. And more so than anything else, I was just impressed by how immaculately balanced all the progression is, where you always feel like you're advancing. There is some depth lost later in rounds, as your attacks become a bit too intricate to meaningfully control with movement alone. But thankfully, the exciting sensation of barely holding on never goes away, and that's truly the star of the show here. Someone in a long lost comment recommended I play Kitty Death Room. I didn't, unfortunately, and that could have been the end of it. But the name isn't exactly easy to forget, so it stuck with me, and I'm very glad it did. This game is incredible. Being a spiritual successor to Catbird, it borrows a lot from it. And most importantly, perhaps, it steals both its impeccable controls and excellent art. Just look at how stunning these animations are. I still think I prefer the flow of the puzzles in the first game a little bit more, as it rarely had you slow down. Moving multiple characters into careful positions just to make a jump sometimes kills the momentum a bit. But this is otherwise a very worthy sequel. As a big fan of tower defense games, it surprises me how little mini TD stands out. Its enemies and towers feel safe and stale, and there's few mechanics here you haven't seen before. So why am I making a video about it? Well, it's because almost no one does it as well as it does. Its graphics and atmosphere is executed beautifully, and the towers, while basic, complement each other really well. The stages are plentiful, and they're well balanced. And there's almost no fluff here to take away from the core experience, which I find myself appreciating more and more the longer I play. In addition to the normal stages, I would have liked a true endless mode as well perhaps, but even without it, this is a game I keep coming back to. As a big fan of Trackmania, I will say that I definitely felt a bit of deja vu when I first saw the original Jet Car stunts back in 2010, and when I discovered just a month ago it had a sequel, I knew I had to check it out. So how does it compare exactly? Well, the truth is that I actually really like it. It differentiates itself in many key ways. Being half Trackmania and half Rocket League, you have a boost that you can run in midair to gain that extra lift for the many tricky jumps you have to do. Controlling just poorly enough to still make you want to drive your plane on the road most of the time, it finds a great balance between unruly and fun to master. The cars handle unlike any I've seen before, but it's not exactly like I've seen stages like these that often either, so they feel like a good match somehow. And with a campaign that outshines the first game, as well as many user-made levels if you want to roll the dice over there, there's really nothing missing here. It's definitely deserving of its place as an excellent phone game. 